Hello, here's the video going over 10.3 ellipses day two. So day one was graphing ellipses, day two is writing equation. So I will be able to write an equation of an ellipse um, once you're done with this video. Now before we actually start the process of writing equations, there's a couple things that you need to make sure that you understand, and that is what A, B, and C represent in the context of ellipses. So A is the distance from your center to the end point of, a, of the major axis. So to the end point of the major axis. Um, those endpoints are also called your vertices. So A is the distance from your center to one of your vertices. So anytime you're looking for letter A, you're doing something with the major axis. B is very similar. It's the distance from your center to the endpoint of your minor axis. So instead of writing everything down, I'm just going to make a note that this has to do with the minor axis. Um, but again, it's the distance from your center to the endpoint of your minor axis, or it's half the half the length of your entire minor axis. And then C is the distance from the center to the foci. So if you recall from graphing ellipses, in order to find the foci, we needed to calculate what C was. So anytime you're given information about the foci, you're going to use C. Okay, so A is the distance from the center to the endpoint of the major, B is the distance from the center to the endpoint of the minor, and C is the distance from the center to the foci. Okay, so our first example, we are given um, the graph of an ellipse, and from the graph, it's pretty easy to tell where your center is. Your center is right in the middle. Boom, there it is. So my center for this ellipse is at 0, 2. Now another thing I need to make a note of is the direction in which my, my, or my major axis is going. So your major axis is the longer portion of your ellipse. And as I can see, that that is a horizontal major axis. So since it is a horizontal major axis, that means when I write my equation, my bigger number is going to go underneath the x. Okay, so from here, I still need to know what A and B are. So again, A is the distance from your center to the endpoint of the major axis. So that is this distance over here, which is four units. So A is four. B is the distance from your center to the endpoint of your minor axis. So that's that distance which happens to be three. So A is four and B is three. Now to write the equation, you have your standard form equation for an ellipse. I'm gonna write that down really quick because I don't think I had it on the other slide. So it's X minus H quantity squared plus Y minus K quantity squared equals one over A squared and B squared. Now this A squared and B squared, these things can shift around, okay? A squared is not necessarily always underneath X and B squared is not necessarily always underneath Y. It just depends on where your major axis is. Um, but I do have all my information so I can write my equation. So I have X minus H, H is zero, K is two. So X minus zero quantity squared plus Y minus two quantity squared equals one. I always like to do the numerators first. And then for my denominator, since I had a horizontal major axis, that means my a squared is going to go underneath the x. So a was 4, so 4 squared is 16. And b is 3, so b squared is 9. And there is your equation for letter a. Letter b, I can find my center. This one's at the origin, so my center is at 0, 0. Now, if you'll notice, you're given these two points inside your ellipse, um, and those two points inside your ellipse are the foci. Your foci will always lie along the major axis. So if I look at this, my major axis is now vertical. So I'm going to make a note that I have a vertical major axis. Now, A is the distance from your center to the end point of your major axis. So that's that blue distance 
which is 5, so A is 5. B is the distance from your center, sorry, not B, we don't have B. C is the distance from your center to a focus. So that's this distance in green, which is going to be 3. So we don't actually have B, so I'm going to use the formula that we had to find the foci to be able to solve for B. That formula was C squared equals A squared minus B squared. So I have C squared, which is 9, A squared is 25, minus B squared, subtract 25 from both sides. I get negative 16 equals negative B squared, so B squared equals 16. Now I'm not actually going to bother taking the square root of 16 because I'm going to have to square it anyway because if you look in your denominator, it has a B squared. So I'm not going to waste my time taking the square root. Um, so my center is at the origin, so I have x minus 0 quantity squared, y minus 0 quantity squared equals 1. And I had a vertical major axis, which means my a squared is underneath the y. So a squared was 5. So, or sorry, A was 5, so A squared is 25, and B squared is 16. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, well, isn't this distance B right here? Well, technically, yes. However, since this point is not actually labeled, we cannot assume that that is at um, 4. So we can't really assume that B is 4, even though it ends up being 4. You can't really make the assumption unless the point is actually labeled. Because you don't know how this x-axis is scaled. It could be scaled by 1s, could be scaled by 2s. Um, but yeah. All right, let's do another one. Um, letter C, I have my endpoints of my vertices at negative 7, 2, and 5, 2. Endpoints of my minor axis are at negative 1, 0, and negative 1, 4. So if I look at my vertices, my vertices are the endpoints of the major axis. It's my x-coordinates that are different. So since my x-coordinates are different, that means I'm going to have a horizontal major axis. Now I want to figure out the length of this major axis. So I'm going from a negative 7 to a positive 5. That's 12 units. So the entire length is 12 units, which means A is half of that, because hey, A is the distance from your center to one of those endpoints. So that makes A 6. Now I can also find um, the length of my minor axis using that same idea. If I look at my minor axis, it's my Y coordinates that are different. So I'm going from 0 to 4, so that's 4 units, which makes B 2. Now where is my center? So your center has to be right in the middle of your vertices. It can also be right in the middle of your minor axis, but I'm just going to work with the vertices. So I need to figure out what's in the middle of negative 7 and 5, and that is negative 1. Now another way that you can think about it is my A is 6, so that means I need to go 6 units away from 7 and 6 units away from 5. So if I take negative 7 plus 6, that gives me negative 1. If I take 5 minus 6, that gives me negative 1 as well. So there's my center. So I have my center, I know the direction of my major axis, I can go ahead and write the equation. So x minus h quantity squared y minus k quantity squared equals 1. My major axis is horizontal, so that means a squared is going to go underneath x, and b squared is going underneath y. All right, letter D, the major axis is 8 units long, so that means a is half of that, so a is 4. It's parallel to the x-axis. So what does it mean to be parallel to the x-axis? Here's your x and your y-axis, x, y. Parallel to the x-axis means we're talking about something horizontal. So I'm gonna make a note that this ends up being a horizontal major axis. My minor axis is two units long, so two units long means that b is going to be one, and my center is at negative two, negative five. So there's my h and my k. So I have x minus negative two, uh, y minus negative 5, which of course those ends up being uh, pluses since you're subtracting negative, 
horizontal major means a squares underneath x. We have a lot of horizontal major axes for these. And then b squares underneath y. I wonder if the next one's going to be a vertical major. We shall see. Um, for letter E, I have my vertices at negative 8, 4, and 4, 4. My foci are at negative 3, 4, and negative 1, 4. If you look at your vertices, it's my x-coordinates that are different. So once again, we have a horizontal major. I need to find my length of the major axis. So the distance from negative 8 to positive 4 is 12 units, which makes a 6. Now to find the center, I want to go 6 units away from both negative 8 and 4. So I can take negative 8 plus 6. That is going to give me negative 2. I could also take 4 minus 6, which will also give you that negative 2. And then for your foci, C is the distance from your center to a focus. So how far away is negative 2 from negative 1? Well, that's just one unit, so C is 1. You could also compare negative 2 to negative 3. Those are also one unit apart. So now that I have A and C, I can use the formula for the foci to be able to solve for B. So C squared is 1, A squared is 36, minus B squared, subtract 36 from both sides, and you get B squared equals 35. And again, not going to take the square root because it's kind of pointless to do so. So here's my h and my k. So I have x minus negative 2, y minus 4 equals 1. Horizontal major once again, so that means a squared is underneath x, and b squared is underneath y. All right, and that is how you write equations for ellipses when you're given pieces of information.